Welcome, uh, Christina Lampe-Önerud. Uh, it has uh, been some years since we met the last time, and uh, uh, you were just in uh, to, s to sign a contract with HP on your battery. Yes. Uh, as an entrepreneur and a leader, uh, you have also been uh, talking a lot of sustainability. And um, how is it to be a Swedish uh, young woman in in US uh, to take on board this type of challenges? Mm. So I think being an entrepreneur anywhere is uh, incredibly fun and incredibly hard. <laughs> being a woman is um, you get a lot of attention, you better perform, and uh, otherwise you're just a human being, you know. So I think entrepreneurship is basically coupled with some people that fearlessly ignore the facts of the past and embrace the opportunities for problems that we try to solve. In my case, I am very, very determined to be one small piece to solve and help solve climate change that is detrimental for generations to come. But how is it to be a leader as a Swede in, in US uh, in such an uh, expanding area? Oh, I think it's great, uh, you know, coming from Sweden originally, you learn a little bit about tradition, uh, grace and courtesy is very important, which is very appreciated in the US culture, and to have an opportunity to be active in both regions and also in Asia at the same time, I actually feel, while I carry two passports, a Swedish and a US passport, I feel like a global citizen, and these problems are global, and frankly the solutions need to find partners globally as well for deployment. As I understand, you also have reached uh, new numbers of patent, and I uh, discussed with you also the the, the new batteries uh, contract with HP. Mm. And but I understand that you also introduce your battery in other parts of the market, isn't yes, there? Yes, it's true. So when we spoke the first time, I, I shared my vision, which was if we create a battery platform, which we now have uh, uh, outlined by 150 patents filed globally about 50 are issued. Uh, we describe the chemistry, the mechanical solutions and the electronics. And we have had an opportunity to go into portable electronics, to transportation and to grid energy storage. And in principle, also fulfilling the vision. Like Lego pieces, building blocks, three for a laptop, 16 for a power assisted bike, 400 for a scooter, 2,000 for an electric car, 40,000 for a grid station. So a very scalable technology that is available now in mass production. Do you feel comfortable with the, the, the numbers you see that, uh, as I understand, in 2008 it was an uh, investment of $150 billion in the what you can call low-carbon economy? Mm. Uh, is that uh, you feel the, the, the interest uh, from people who would like to invest in yes, this sector? The, the interest is enormous, unbelievable actually. Uh, I think it's an incredible time to try to bring solutions to the market because the investment community is also very, very interested in helping support that innovation. And I think the policymakers on their side also feel, I think, a renewed sense of urgency because citizens in multiple regions and multiple countries are pushing pretty hard to get this done. Where do you see the next breakthrough for Boston Power? Uh, so we have launched a few automotive programs and I think you'll see our battery in multiple car brands actually. That's traditionally a slow-moving industry. Uh, but I believe some of them will launch pretty quickly. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Kai. <laughs>